Good morning, everyone. And uh, thank you, AFAX and DigiPub, for this opportunity. <coughs> All right. So, uh, yeah, I've been with Comscore for almost four years now, but I'm not the president of international business. I'm part of the India sales team at Comscore. So, <laughs> yep. And uh, it's great to be back here. I've never missed a DigiPub so far. This is the third DigiPub for me since 2017. Uh, so what I'll uh, attempt to do is, uh, you know, build, uh, talk about three uh, broad topics uh, today uh, in the keynote, which is a big responsibility. Uh, we've had a very busy 2019, right? Lots of events, lots of stuff going on. Uh, we'll get a glimpse of what some of those uh, uh, events and then some interesting trends that we've seen uh, emerge in the last year and uh, a quick glimpse of what the future looks like, uh, right? So yeah, indeed, it's been a very busy 2019. Sports, politics, news, you name it, and it's been there. I mean, it's, it's like a thriller in itself, right? It started pretty much with the IPL, right? That was the first big thing that happened in uh, 2019 that, uh, you know, it got more visitors than the earlier editions. Uh, all right, so a glimpse of what could be, uh, a snapshot of what happened, and some interesting trends that we've seen in the last one year, right? So it was a very busy 2019, started with the IPL. What you see here are the daily visitors to the Hotstar Android app on the days uh, in April and May till the IPL in 2019, right? Uh, what you see here is, uh, you know, uh, all right, so what do you think those peaks are? Those were the big match days or ma days when there were two uh, matches on the same day, right? Uh, Hotstar app got about anywhere between 40 to 50 million uh, unique visitors during this month. So how many of you watched the IPL final? That's it? Mumbai versus CSK? Right? All right. How many of you ordered food on Swiggy during the nail biter? Okay. Not many here did, but looks like quite a few of us actually did, right? Uh, Swiggy had an average of about seven, eight million uh, unique visitors per day on their Android app uh, prior to the IPL. And during the IPL, actually, it spiked up to 18 to 19 million on the day of the IPL final, right? They also did a lot of, uh, uh, you know, uh, noise around IPL. They spent some big money, uh, and that seems to be reflecting in these numbers, as you see. All right, so what was the next big thing after IPL? Sorry? I couldn't hear you. Elections. Elections, yes. And after that? The World Cup. Yeah, I should have clarified. What was the next cricket thing? So yes, the World Cup it was, right? And obviously the heartbreaker on the India-New Zealand match garnered the maximum number of uh, audiences on that day, right? Uh, Hotstar again had anywhere between 40 and 50 million unique visitors on the Android app uh, during these days. What do you think those peaks are? Sorry? Match days, yes, but not all match days. The India match days, yes. Right? Those were, those were the days when Hotstar got the maximum numbers in. Right? And as you can see, as India got knocked out of the final, uh, at the semi-final stage, uh, you know, there's a dip as well. How did you guys get over that two-day heartbreak? Obviously, you couldn't have ordered drinks on Swiggy. They don't deliver. A lot of people actually looked at retail therapy, it seems. Right? So, two days after the uh, IPL semifinal, uh, Flipkart and Amazon ran uh, big sale days. Right? So, 15 and 16 was Amazon's big shopping day. Sorry, Amazon's prime days. And uh, 15 to 18 was uh, Flipkart's uh, big shopping days. They made a lot of noise around it, and that seemed to have paid off too, 
right? So they saw a clear spike in their uh, reach on, this is again, uh, on their apps, right? So, yep. <clears throat> but none of these seem to have changed the regular uh, behavior, right? And, uh, all right, so there's one more. The sacred games, right? How many of you watch the sacred games? Right. Seems to so reflect in the numbers as well, right? Netflix spent some big money acquiring uh, or producing Netflix uh, uh, Sacred Games and this seems like a very good repeat of what happened in Sacred Games 1 to uh, season 1 last year, right? This, is, this also seems to be the way Netflix is acquiring audiences in India as well. So when, there's, when there is a big launch, there is a spike and it goes down, but the, uh, the, the trend is... Uh, a little higher than what it used to be after these big shows, right? So these big launches are what uh, Netflix is actually using to uh, gain ground in India, right? But none of these action-packed days seem to have changed people's behavior on the usual uh, content consumption patterns, right? YouTube and WhatsApp are pretty much always on. Right? That doesn't seem to have changed, right? So if you look at usage in the mornings, afternoons, evenings, or from midnight uh, to early mornings, right? Face, use YouTube, WhatsApp, and Facebook seem to be pretty much always on. Yeah? At least once during the day, uh, in the, each of these day parts, uh, uh, people use these apps, right? So Comscore is now able to measure um, uh, visitations or traffic at a day or within a day on a given uh, day part as well. All right. That led to some, I mean, behind all of this activity, uh, there were some very interesting trends that emerged as well, right? And uh, one of them is that though reach is growing, which, uh, you know, Srikanth also mentioned that all the properties are gaining ground, they are growing traffic. Engagement is also shifting from some categories of content to others, right? News was obviously one of the uh, biggest gainers, but so was social media, right? So social media increased in, uh, increased its user base, but most of this, or quite a significant chunk of it, uh, seems to have come from the new age uh, social media like TikTok and Halo and ShareChat and Telegram, right? while the traditional players more or less continued their trend or fairly remained flat, right? So that's an interesting uh, thing, some of which I'll touch upon again later uh, in, the, in the presentation, right? News information, right? News was again a big gainer, not only in reach, but it drove up engagement manifold, right? And it was not just the elections uh, that drove this engagement, we've seen that you know, news as a, as a category, when it gains uh, traction, uh, it also uh, slowly uh, converts in terms of engagement. This is a pattern we've seen emerge in other markets as well. Right. So that has made news bigger and more engaging than it ever was. Right. It used to be the fifth largest in terms of reach across content categories, and now it has moved up to be number three. It has pulled past social media and entertainment in reach, right? And some of that growth is coming from video as well, right? Uh, so you could argue that the first growth in uh, digital consumption was led by uh, print, uh, but now with uh, the growth in video and uh, you know, falling data rates and growing data speeds, uh, this, this puts the uh, TV players who are more attuned to video at a much stronger position, right? So this is, the, uh, this is what we see in terms of uh, consumption. What you see here are the uh, unique viewers on video for some of the traditional TV players with a digital presence today, right? And again, irrespective of all the cricket that happened, there's been a steady growth in consumption of sports content in India, 
right? This is something that we uh, caught on to uh, last year as well, but the growth has been steady and continuing to grow. And just the reach, not just the unique visitors, the, the, the population itself has grown and sports consumption has beaten the growth of digital access or usage in India as well. There's been a 1.7 times increase in reach for sports, almost 4x consumption in uh, time spent, and 10 times the number of uh, pages viewed, right? And the, the other interesting thing is that this growth is not limited to men alone, right? Sports is generally considered the uh, you know, uh, pastime of men, uh, I mean, consumption-wise, right? But that is changing too. We're seeing a steady growth of consumption among female audiences as well, right? More than two times uh, growth in reach and 13 times growth in uh, page views and five times in uh, time spent, right? So what this has resulted is it has given a sizable scale uh, in terms of reach for sports as a content to be a medium to target females, right? This was not a viable medium uh, to target females in the past, at least digitally. Now that is changing, right? So this presents some interesting opportunities for brands to go after this audience. The other big trend is that product research has a, uh, e-commerce has a growing influence in product research, right? So what that means is, you know, we, we conducted a study uh, early this year, late last year, to understand online consumption patterns or uh, consumer research patterns uh, of, how, of buyers. So where do they uh, research, where do they start, what do they do online, how do they take, make their purchasing decisions and whatnot. Some interesting things that, uh, you know, came up. So a lot of consumers are now starting their product research journey on e-commerce sites, right? So top two of the three uh, research destinations are e-commerce sites, Amazon and Flipkart, right? And irrespective of where they actually buy, the product research is happening online, right? A lot of people also spoke about uh, researching the product in store as well, right? A significant uh, portion of people uh, also did that, right? And this was a uh, survey we conducted uh, across uh, India uh, with about 4,000 plus respondents. Uh, yep, and Amazon, Flipkart, and Google dominated the product research space. And interestingly, because of the access to the information or uh, call it what you may, the window for brands to influence their product decisions is also fairly small. I mean, when I saw this data point, I was uh, uh, quite surprised too that a typical buyer spends less than two weeks or more than half the buyers spend less than two weeks researching their products before actually buying them, right? So how much time do you really have to take those uh, influences to audiences, right? That's, that's for brands and publishers to ponder. What opportunities can you give brands? to uh, make things better. This is not new. We've been hearing about the future being local or growth in vernacular content. And one of the asks from the industry, the publishing industry also from Comscore has been to measure uh, reach of vernacular content or language specific content. So Comscore is now able to offer that, right? Uh, so Hindi as a language dominates the uh, reach right, at 146 million uh, unique visitors uh, in the month of June, right? And we'll see how that has changed. And interestingly, news consumption, more than 50% of the news also uh, is being consumed through uh, Hindi content, right? All right, so while Hindi has been big and it remains big, what is interesting is the amount of growth that vernacular language content uh, has seen, right? Uh, 
for instance, the reach of Kannada uh, audience has increased, or I mean, the reach of Kannada publications has increased fourfold in the last one year, right? Bengali has increased threefold in the last year. Hindi, interestingly, though individual publishers have seen uh, good growth, it seems to be consolidating, right? Uh, overall reach seems to be consolidating. It's probably a sign that, you know, when uh, access to their, uh, access to content in their own languages or mother tongue is more uh, available more and more, uh, people are uh, tending to shift towards consumption in that language as well, right? So Malayalam uh, uh, has grown, uh, Tamil again, three per, I mean, by three times, Marathi, Punjabi, name it, there's, there's, I mean, every language is growing significantly, right? So now, uh, what is, what is contributing to some of this growth? We see two patterns uh, there as well, or two major contributors. One is the aggregators uh, that you see today, right? They are growing in uh, reach as well, be it Daily Hunt or ShareChat or Hello, TikTok, user-generated, moderated, uh, or even publisher-driven content across all these aggregators are contributing to some of this growth, right? And this, I mean, the, I mean, last year at the same time, uh, vernacular uh, aggregators uh, had a reach of 92 million. Now that has changed to 167 million, almost a 70, 80 percent increase in their user base. Right? Some of these guys were not even, uh, uh, you know, uh, had very small scale at the same time last year. Even Daily Hunt has grown almost 70 percent. So at this scale, at 167, now vernacular offers a sizable audience in terms of reach as well, right? So which helps you localize your campaigns or uh, at each uh, language level, you're able to customize your campaigns, right? The second big thing is audio, right? Which is still, I would say, a largely uh, unexplored or uh, green space, right? So this... Uh, what you see here are the largest players in audio or music uh, today, right? So this presents some interesting, so uh, audio doesn't have the uh, barriers that, uh, you know, the web or text had earlier. So there's, there's no uh, challenges around literacy, there is no challenges around, uh, you know, it, it requires one uh, sensory input less. Even if you're watching video, you need both vision and, uh, you know, hearing. But with audio, you need only one. Uh, and this is uh, more or less, I would say, a turnaround of sorts, right? Radio was big before TV came along. So now we are just digitizing that audio input as well, right? Uh, so I hope the rest of the 2019 also remains as busy and productive in uh, uh, growth, right? Cool. That's about it.